Nurgle is one of the four major chaos gods of the Materium. He is most commonly called the Lord of Decay, but is also known by countless other titles and names including the Fly Lord, the Plague Lord, the Great Corrupter, and the Master of Pestilence. The power of Nurgle is ultimately embodied in entropy, morbidity, disease, and physical corruption. Of the four great ruiner's powers, Nurgle is said to be the one most involved with the everyday lives of mortals. Through the gifts of raging fevers and shaking chills, its hand is upon them from cradle to grave. Few mortals escape its touch in their lives. The plague god is sometimes called the Lord of All, because all things, no matter how strong and secure, fall to physical corruption and entropy in the end. Every Chaos God embodies within the Immaterium the hopes, fears, and other strong emotions generated by mortal beings in real space. In the case of Nurgle, their fear of death and disease is the source of his greatest power. The mortal's unconscious response to that fear their desperation to cling to life no matter the cost gives Nurgle an opening into their souls. The whispered prayer of a parent over a fever-struck child, the anguished pleas of the dying man for one more day of life, these are meat and drink to it. The power of Nurgle waxes and wanes as its pandemic sweep across the galaxy. When untold billions fall prey to the newest plagues, the plague god's strength can overshadow that of any of the other chaos gods, even Korn for a period. At other times, the power of Nurgle withers away to lay quiescent until circumstances are ripe for it to erupt forth once more. There is nothing in all of creation that does not decay. No civilization forever endures the machinations of its rivals. No king survives the plotting of his enemies. No life avoids decay. Not even what Chaos considers to be the false emperor with all his deluded sacrificial supplicants and thousands of attending tech priests will elude the ravages of time and his eventual demise. The question is, what happens when the end comes? Nurgle is the answer to that question. Each inevitable ending brings with it an equally certain start to something new. When a Katachan spiker traps and consumes a careless Imperial Guardsman, the life of the soldier ends and a new spiker grows. Rotted flesh that sloughs from the arm of a diseased underhive ganger is left in the sewers to feed the plague rats that scrape out a miserable existence in those dark, maggot-filled tunnels. Even a rogue trader whose contract is terminated must seek out new avenues for commerce. There is no ending that does not result in the hope of renewal. It is because of this inescapable fact of life that Nurgle is known to many as the Lord of All, for there is nothing that transpires anywhere that does not serve its ends.
There is no being, no action or outcome that does not further Nurgle's aims. In truth, it could simply sit back and wait for the universe to unfold according to its design. Nurgle is not content, however, to wait. It has too much energy, too much enthusiasm for its work to just sit idly by. From deep within its manse, it brews contagion, both physical plagues and virulent ideas that it and its followers then unleash upon the mortal realm. It welcomes the resistance of those who attempt to deny it, for each time they erect defenses against its advances, it learns new ways to circumvent the opposition. Each cure breeds a newer, more powerful disease. Every victory for its enemies is Pyrrhic, coming at a cost so great that it leaves the defenders open to the tender predations of Nurgle's ever-evolving poxes. This is the nature of it. Resistance is self-defeating. Change is a delay, nothing more. Running and denial only buy time at a cost of suffering, and time has no meaning in the realm of chaos. Records of the many sentient species of the galaxy often say that Nurgle corrupts, that he brings ruination to all. To a small extent, they are correct, but their evaluation is narrow in scope and fails to grasp the greater truth. The more primitive races have a much better understanding of the undeniable nature of the master of certitude. Life is struggle and erosion. To face the dawn is to await the dusk and, in turn, to endure the night. On a grander scale, if a being had the luxury of observing the rise and fall of empires, of seeing the birth of suns and their eventual collapse into swirling masses of cosmic destruction, the observer would surely recognize the rightful place of Nergor as the Shepherd of Destiny. It is only Nurgle's fondness for rot, for the unpleasant nature of disease and decay that prevents more from accepting its truth. It can be difficult for a mortal to accept that the rotting of a limb or the expulsion of their entrails is indeed a blessing, and yet it is so. Even the decrepit and decaying form of the Emperor of Mankind, ensconced in his golden throne, sits as a testament to Nurgle's greatness and its truth. Each day a thousand souls give their fleshy bodies and immortal souls to this false idol in a vein to attempt to preserve his rotting presence. It is a losing battle, but the ammunition spent in the conflict the human body sent to their wasted doom does indeed serve a purpose. Nurgle's purpose. Each mortal that falls begets new life and new hope. This is the trade in which Nurgle traffics. Flesh is the coin of its realm, and hopes are the interest it pays on the investments made. Truly, Nurgle embodies the nature of all things, and thus earns its honorific as the Lord of All. Its Manifestation I gazed at its magnificence, my vision completely filled with its glorious girth. 
All around me was flesh and smiling flies. Within its bark I spied lesser minions suckling on its leaking entrails. At its feet, pools of pus and other bodily fluids gathered, in which its children splashed and played with glee. It was a blessing to behold such glory and joy. It was with great sadness that I awoke into a world filled with imperial dogma and admonitions. I knew then the path I must walk. Taken from the Journal of Ulberna. When it comes to understanding the glory that is the physical form of the Plague Father, those who are privileged enough to be able to read about the god in the pages of secret texts hidden away in the Black Library are on equal footing with the primitive warriors gathered around sooty bonfires within the wandering kill cruiser battleships of marauding orcs. Nurgle, like the other major chaos gods, does not have one single form that can be recorded, shared, analyzed, or conceived. It is majesty unfathomable by the mortal mind. Additionally, Nurgle is often referred to as a he, with the masculine gender, though in fact, like all the other entities composed of psychic energy called Chaos Gods, it in fact has no gender. Still, if one were to delve into the comparative histories and galaxy-wide myths associated with it, certain commonalities would present themselves. Whereas other gods within the realm of chaos are associated with dozens, even hundreds of depictions, there are far fewer variations on the appearance of the Plague Father. The legends and tales universally describe Nurgle in unflattering terms. It is said to be an immense, bloated humanoid, its body swollen with putrefaction. Its skin is shown as leathery and necrotic, its surface poked with running sores, swelling buboes and oozing wounds. Internal organs bulging with decay spill through splits in the ruptured skin to hang like bunches of scrofulous grapes around its vast girth. It is a vast mound of rotting flesh with open sores and gaping wounds in which its lesser demonic minions like Nurglings, cavord and frolic, bursting forth from its postules and suckling upon their dripping foulness. Weeping postules ooze filth, and its bowels constantly issue forth putrescent waste. Its sickening, pus-covered form is accompanied by an enveloping cloud of buzzing flies. Beneath its fingernails, maggots, and other carrion feeders lay eggs around which develop cysts that periodically burst open and spew their rancid payloads. Perhaps the tales are correct. Perhaps they are not. It does not matter though, because Whatever dwells within the mansion at the center of the Garden of Nurgle, there can be no denying that the creations of this being are both foul and wondrous, and the joy with which it goes about its work is infectious. Even if none of the insanity-inspired stories of Nurgle can be counted on to be perfectly accurate, the similarities among them are too hard to dismiss. 
and those similarities extend beyond the gut-churning descriptions of its open sores, exposed intestines, and stupefying stench. Rots and decay are part of its nature, but so it seems are jocularity and enthusiasm. Such is the paradox of Nurgle. Indeed, it may be its boundless energy, the passion with which it delights in its work, and its irrepressible joviality that erodes the minds of so many who contemplate its existence. It seems impossible to believe that a rotund-footed purveyor of plague and ruin could simultaneously positively beam with mirth and have such concern for the billions of souls upon whom it inflicts its racking and hideous poxes. To bend the mind toward the task of reconciling such foulness with such frivolity is to invite madness. Those who are able to do so without slipping into lunacy are fortunate. They will have taken an important step toward understanding the great corruption that is to come. Unlike their less enlightened brethren, they alone will recognize that the Plague Lord is a tireless gardener of rot who is always trying to prepare the slowly eroding realm they call reality for its grotesque apotheosis.